Hi everybody, so we're reaching the end of our study of linked lists, how to search for an item in a linked list, how to remove a node from a linked list, and how to insert nodes at the end of a linked list, in the middle of a linked list, or at the beginning of a linked list. And hopefully, with all the practice opportunities that you're having, a lot of these concepts are really starting to sink in now. Now, this code um, relates to um, a previous tutorial, and hopefully you have studied that tutorial. Um, if you haven't, um, there's a link hopefully on the web page that will take you back to that tutorial and you can um, study it. It's all about deleting a node from a linked list. And this is based on um, an array of node objects. Here it is. So this represents our linked list. And this code allows us to process the linked list of nodes. Now today, what I'm going to ask you is, instead of using nodes to help us implement our linked list, could we do this? What is this? Does it look familiar? Hopefully, you can see that we now have a two-dimensional array to implement our linked list instead of node objects. So, this is an array, if you can imagine this is one array, of arrays. This is a two-dimensional array. And at each index in our array, we have an, another array, not a node this time, okay? So if we were to reference data in our two-dimensional array, then 16 is at location 00, zero and this 1 is at location 0, 01. 11 is at location 10, and the 3 is in location 1. One. So we can see that the data items are always at column index 0, so 0, 0, row index 0, column index 0, row index 1, column index 0, row index 2, column index 0, row index 3, column index 0. And the next pointer is always at column index 1, row index 0, column index 1. Row index 1, column index 1, row index 2, column index 2, etc., etc. So let's see if we can just redesign some of our code here to implement a linked list as a list of arrays and not as a, and a list of nodes. Okay, so we're going to delete the node class and we're going to delete this. And we're going to redesign that. So I'm going to say row zero is an array that stores these values. Row zero is 16, one. Row one is 11, three. Row two is none, four. Row three is 15 minus 1 and row 4 is none minus 1 and now i'm going to push all of these rows into an array we now have a two-dimensional array now let it be known i don't know if i need to tell you this but i'm going to tell it to you anyway we could do this here's my array and as you know a two-dimensional array is an array of arrays. There's row 0, there's row 1, there's row 2, there's row 3, and there is row 4. That's the end of, these are all the rows. And let's just plug in the values, 16, uh, 1, 
11, 3, none, 4, 15, minus 1, and none, minus 1. So that's another way of representing a two-dimensional array of, well, it's an array of arrays, not of nodes this time. So let's just go with this uh, implementation, because it's a bit easier to look at. And let's see if we can change some aspects of our node design to cater for our new array of arrays design. Okay. So in our display list data procedure, we had a node object which has a data item. But this time we have an array at a row indicated by search pointer. So it starts at zero. So nodes zero is this array. And the data item is in column zero. And when we update the search pointer, we go to row zero first, nodes zero, which is here, and we assign it column one, because column one tells us the next pointer. So we have just <laughs> redesigned our display list data procedure to now cater for an array of arrays to implement a linked list. Now let's see if that works. Just gonna delete all of that for the moment. We'll get back to that. Let's just take that away. Let's take that away. Display list data. We should go 16 to one, which is 11 to three, which is 15. 16, 11, 15, same as before. Bingo! It worked. Fantastic. So let's go into our, just going to ignore the display free pointers procedure for the moment, because it's pretty much similar to what I just showed you for display list data. It's all similar, guys. I'm going to go through the delete node procedure, but it, what I've just explained to you is exactly the same. So we're going to visit each row in the nodes array. And the data item, remember, is at column zero. So that's going to be replaced by our column number. That's going to be replaced, uh, sorry, that is going to be replaced by a column number. Next pointer is in col column one. There it is, column one, column one, column one, column one. Those are all the next pointers. Next pointers, yep, yeah, we know, they're in column one. Next pointers are in column one. Yep, we know. Next pointers are in column one. Yep, we get it. Ne yep, here we go again. Next pointers are in column one. Data items are in column zero. And next pointers, of course, are in column one. So this time, instead of processing node objects like we did before, that was a node object with a dot next P. But now, instead of there being a node object at that index, we actually have a row of a two-dimensional array. This is a single row in our two-dimensional array. And we're going to be processing this column of this array. So that's how that works. So let's see if this works. We're going to delete a node. We're going to delete 11, and we're going to display the list data. We should see 16 and then 15. Let's run and see if it works. Yes, it worked. So you can see that if you have a good understanding of two-dimensional arrays and how they work, you can implement a linked list as an array of arrays. And hopefully you're already comfortable with implementing a linked list as an array of node objects. Before I finish this video, I just want to tell you, you may see this concept in your study 
of binary trees and other data structures as well. Okay, so be ready for that. Be ready to think and be ready to solve problems.